to read to you a small passage from this book. I read it and read it again and it just brings a smile on me. I have watched the sunset shrinking and mean over a cold, drab London street and stood outside a mud, a mud hut next morning on a Kenyan hillside and seen it rise in glory over the East African plains. Africa is close. That is in reference to uh, England. Few go there. Africa has a reputation, poverty, disease, war. But when outsiders do go, they are often surprised by Africa's welcome. They are entranced rather than frightened. The visitors are welcomed and cared for in Africa. If you go, you will find most Africans friendly, gentle, and infinitely polite. You will frequently be humbled by African generosity. Africans, Africans have in abundance what we call social skills. These are not skills that are formally taught or learned. There's no click on, have a nice day smile in Africa. Africans meet, they greet and talk. They look you in the eye and empathize. They hold hands and embrace. Share and accept from others without twitchy self-consciousness. All these things are as natural as music in Africa. I love this description of Africa. And by the way, these are not my words. This is from the book, Africa, Altered States, Ordinary Miracles by Richard Dowden. So that opens up my discussion to talk about Africa. Why Africa? Why do I feel that Africa is the place to be now? Good morning, Dumela, Jambo. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful, another beautiful, gorgeous morning here in Bolawayo. I just uh, enjoy these quiet mornings, especially on a weekend when it seems like you're the only one. Uh, up. I just enjoy the beautiful quiet mornings. So the question I'm going to try and answer or have a conversation with you guys is um, is Zimbabwe really worth it? Is is it worth coming back? Is it worth investing in Zimbabwe? Because the amount of negative stories that come out about Zimbabwe and about Africa in general they make a lot of people very reluctant to come back or to invest in the continent so let me start by saying that remains an individual choice whether you want to stay abroad in the Murikas, in the King's Land, in Europe, or America, even China, India, wherever you choose uh, to lay your head and make it home. But for me, Zimbabwe remains the place to be. Remember, Zimbabwe continues to, the pl to be the place that I have the most peace so let's talk about why i still feel especially the young people you should consider investing in zimbabwe you should consider making it a viable vacation destination make it a viable place to build a home to come for holiday or just just in general have a better knowledge of this continent so let's talk about that just pause for a 
pause and think for a second. Why not Africa? Look at your reasons. Why not? Africa is not the place to be. And then, on the other hand, think of the possibilities. Why Africa and why now? So, why am I saying come to Africa? Come to Zimbabwe. Um, for me, these are the reasons why. And hopefully, they will be an attraction for you to come. Uh, the peace of mind. I honestly cannot overemphasize how that being here makes one feel. For me, I'm at peace. My spirit sings, <laughs> literally, when I get off the plane and they touch the African soil. It doesn't feel oppressive. I don't feel like I don't belong. I feel acceptance without anybody saying, welcome home, without anybody saying, welcome to Zimbabwe, welcome to Africa. Just being on this African soil brings a lot of joy and peace, quietness, stillness in my soul. So I have no doubt that for me, it remains a place to be. I don't feel the pressure of being in the Americas. Uh, the go, 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 the nonstop. I cannot even imagine <laughs> going back there to live and work. Yes, I will go to visit, but Zimbabwe, Africa it remains for me the place to be. So peace of mind. What can I say about the weather? You have to be on the continent to feel and experience the beauty of the African climate. The African sun, there is a way that it feels. When the sun is shining, uh, it feels different. It just is beautiful. It's difficult to put it into words. It is a feeling uh, that you get uh, when you have that African sun touching your skin. Um, beautiful beauty at its best it, it the weather is just i don't know how to put it into words you just have to feel it right now there's a nice gentle cool breeze the sun is up it's i like being up in the morning you get the best of it and it's around seven i'm an early riser so i make sure i enjoy what the morning gives so i'm up and I'm enjoying this cool breeze. Undescribable feeling. Couldn't say enough about the weather. The African sunrise, the African sunsets, they are uniquely gorgeous. You have to come down to be able to experience that. The food. I grow my fruits and vegetables. Right now, my fruits are still at the growing stage. Um, my trees are just still very tender and young. So the first fruits that have been coming up, of course, the birds have been on them because there's not too many fruits on the tree. So they have the first peak, but they're already producing the vegetables. My vegetable garden, I was away for about five and a half months. So it kind of lay fallow. Uh, Papa <laughs> put a few rows of uh, the vegetables that he's enjoying. Uh, we, we are harvesting. There's spinach. He harvested a lot of beetroot. There is uh, oh, nieve, plenty of lute in the garden that I've been harvesting and enjoying. And there's a cornfield there. Lots of corn. So all the things that uh, we need to sustain ourselves I can grow on the on the property um nothing beats going to the garden to harvest your own fruit and vegetable i <laughs> it's it's difficult for me to tell you how fulfilling that is what and i also raise my chickens i have my chicken coops right now i don't have broilers but I have uh, the road runners, the free range chickens. The other good thing about Africa, about Zimbabwe, 
is it's laid back easy easy relaxed pace there's no rush in everything <laughs> in, in fact it takes a lot of patience to get used to the slowness of how things are run here but once you get used to it you say to yourself why have i been running like crazy uh, things do happen it might be a little bit slow but things do happen so that relaxed pace is just is just bliss <laughs> for me um if you are looking at things just happening like that yeah it will be tough for you when you get here you get you you get used to it after a while so the pace is so relaxed i wish a little bit of attention would be taken to speed up things just a little but um, i i'm okay with the with the slow pace it gets you to see and think of what is important you know don't be jealous come on come on you you now take a moment to see and feel and experience whether you're shopping you're talking to people you are ex getting delivery service delivery you <laughs> You get uh, you get that sense that uh, it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen just a little bit slow. <clears throat> so that, to me, at this stage in my life, is really it's cool. I don't I don't mind. Um, what's another reason for being for me saying Africa in Zimbabwe now? I'm surrounded by nature in the mornings, especially in the mornings. <clears throat> I feel like I'm the only person on earth with the sound of birds, my dogs. It's a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful surrounding. And I could not imagine myself giving this up to go back and settle in the Murikas, in, in the Europe's. I... It's difficult to put into words, but it's beautiful. Just being outside, lots of space, lots. And uh, just listening to the sounds of nature. I love it. It's not a concrete jungle here. You have, you feel and touch the soil. You put your feet on the ground, there is soil. You can choose to pay, but when you leave the place natural you start seeing the beauty of nature that's something that you don't see when you are in toronto for instance it's concrete jungle so pretty much the slow relaxed pace easy does it um ample space for chilling is is what has brought me back to the motherland eating fresh fruit eating fresh vegetables mm, i can pick from the garden every day nothing frozen it might be very little or meaningless things that uh, drive some of us to the motherland but to me that is critical but you know to balance this let's talk about the cons of being in Zimbabwe uh, why it might also be difficult to adjust to this place you know there's good and bad about any place but to be fair let's talk about the badish the bad of this place man the other day I was downtown to say that it's a mess is an understatement that's an honest truth I was stoned a shot I was shocked. I haven't seen Bulawayo that crowded. I haven't seen Bulawayo that disorganized. Um, I don't know whether it's because of the rains that I have been uh, pounding our 
streets. The potholes are bigger. The filth, no garbage collection. It, it just, it just brings sadness on the other hand when you have to look at what I've seen the last few days. People have no work. So everybody's selling something. Everybody's hustling there. And uh, when you see the crowds, I, I didn't have my phone. It, I, I had forgotten to charge it the night before. So in a way, I was like, that's good that I don't have to. It's not like I'm hiding. No, I'm telling you what I've seen. Um, this time around, Bulawa looked like uh, a very unwanted city. That was tough for me to look at. Um, power is still an issue here. Power goes off. There's a you know load shedding. There's a lot of jokes going around about load shedding, <laughs> but it's a reality of being here. Um, if you don't have solar, it, it is it is tough being here. So having solar and using you know God's natural light. The sun to power uh, the solar system and so you can have energy is the way to go in Africa it is the way to go because when there is no electricity then you're in big trouble if you have no solar uh, water is another thing it goes off I have water tanks all over the, the property uh, for collecting rain water water goes off goes for days on end and that's still not good for the country for the city, uh, for everybody. If you don't have tanks at your property um, or a borehole that you can get water from, which has become the norm in the cities now. Garbage, I, like I mentioned before, there's garbage everywhere. We are lucky in our area that garbage is collected um, pretty much every Monday. There have been days when they have not shown up and then shown up on the Tuesday or maybe Wednesday um, but it has been fairly regular that uh, garbage is collected hopefully they are working towards building a better garbage collection collection infrastructure recycling is almost non-existent here there's plastic everywhere people you know what I don't like a, an adult a grown a person hmm? take their soda, their drink, and uh, or they eat their KFC or, or, or Nando's or whatever, and just throw the piece of paper or the plastic bottle on the floor. How do you do that, people? Uh, there's no good pl public transport system. There is no good, efficient public transport system. When you go to Europe, when you go to uh, Canada, Canada, Toronto specifically, the transit system is very efficient the locals they might not think so but for some of us coming from non-existent public transit systems we appreciate so we are nowhere near having an organized public transit system the mshika shikas the combis are a nightmare drivers are speedy the passengers are packed in the huh? Garsana <laughs> four four in a small Honda fit. You will see ten people in there. I'm not sure why that is continuously allowed to happen. It's endangering the citizens. It is un un uncomfortable. It is uh, not very healthy. Hmm? And then uh, sometimes you will get in there and. Uh, you know uh the, with the scarcity of water <laughs> and the expense of uh deodorants <laughs> oh i shouldn't be laughing but you know the reality of it is when you get into those mshika shikas <laughs> and combis you better have a strong <laughs> repulsive uh, how do i put it you better have a strong sense of uh uh, holding on uh, when uh, there is bad smells around. It, it is a fact. You guys, I'm not lying. 
Mm. It can be tricky. <laughs> All right, enough about that. I believe cost of living for the majority, for most of us, cost of living in Zimbabwe is a little bit on the high end. You know, this economy is working on the US dollar. Uh, the RTGS and bond notes, nobody wants them. You can't use the bond notes. Nobody's taking them now. Um, so it's, it's, it's I, I, I don't know. This, this one here uh, is tricky because it, it is it is expensive when you're using the US dollars. The pricing of things here, it's ridiculous. It is unsustainable. It's expensive. Uh, people are surviving on Kotamai Boutique, you know, Bend Down Boutique, <laughs> as my cousin says, hey, go to Noosa. <laughs> That's where people buy their clothes, you know. It's not very helpful because it's crushing the, the uh, garment industry. Uh, it's not going to be able to rise the garment industry when people continuously go to Kotamai Boutique. But things are expensive in the stores. Ridiculously expensive. Um, the currency system is confusing here in Zimbabwe. RTG is born uh, in the US dollar. It, it, it's crazy. You, you just you, you have to be good at math. Zimbabweans are good at accounting. <laughs> and then uh, also the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, the internet. It, it's erratic. It's not very efficient at the moment. So internet, the internet, yay, 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 yay. Um, so these are some of the things that are good and bad. I look on the good side. I like being here. I'm enjoying being here. The weather is good. Uh, I do my own planting, growing my own food, raise my own uh, uh, chickens and stuff. Peace of mind. You can buy that. To me, that remains the purpose of me talking to you guys about coming to Zimbabwe to live here, to visit, to invest. I hope that the younger people take the initiative. There's a lot of young people that are coming back. Uh, the young man, Kelvin Birioti, has been doing a good job, you know, um, showcasing the people, the young people that have come back to the continent and are farming and reinvesting in this country. So I urge you to come back, build, find a, a, a business industry that you want to uh, uplift, join it, grow it, um, and slowly but surely the continent is going to get better zimbabwe is going to improve you know <coughs> before i conclude while we are all passing zimbabwe while we are all ignoring zimbabwe and when i say we i'm talking of africans wherever you are in the diaspora here on the continent they are other nationalities that are coming here in droves. My flight from Ethiopia through Ndola to Bulawayo, I have never felt like I am the minority <laughs> coming back to Africa. But on this flight, there were more uh, people uh, from other continents specifically there were lots of chinese people on that plane they are coming here while we ignore and then we will sit on the terraces and complain and feel like we are not being given the space what are we doing and we also urge our governments uh, the leaders of this nation to allow people the black people the africans to have an opportunity let's put the politics aside let's put the parties aside and just embrace one another 
we don't have to be we all don't have to belong to uh one church <laughs> we can worship different churches but still believe in the same god in different names and i think that's the attitude that we should have when it comes to our country something is letting the young people not want to come back but while the young people are not wanting to come back it has opened the doors for the other nationalities that don't really care for you and me uh, they are investing for their own people they come here and invest for china for asia for not for africa you know it, it, the people are still suffering here but there is investing happening by other nationalities where are we young people where are we in this rush to get a piece of africa to get a piece of zimbabwe i think we need to look at how we can get ourselves positioned so we also participate in the development in the development in the economy of zimbabwe in the economy and development of the african continent so having said that it would be nice to have you young people to have you uh, people of my age anyone who has an interest in africa especially africans black people i'm speaking to you come come back come on let's let's find each other let's find a way to make a collective uh, investment a collective positive outlook on the continent too many negative stories about us about who we are about how we run our affairs let's try and build this continent together i think uh, there's room for us there's room for positive conversations there's room for positive rebuilding of this continent and it's you and i that can make this continent the best it can be for the future generations for the future africans uh, to be born so let's 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 leave something let's leave a legacy of building and investing in this continent in this country so in the meantime i think i <laughs> let's let's have time to have another conversation about uh africa and zimbabwe in particular while you are thinking about uh, coming back while you're thinking about investing while you are investing in africa uh reach me on my uh, instagram instagram dm send me an email talk to me let's meet and chat about your projects in the meantime i'm enjoying the african sun i'm just basking in the glory of the african sun take care of yourselves and each other and let's meet again on the next video there's a lot more coming so please subscribe if you haven't like my channel and share it help me to grow help me to uh, uh, help me send this message that africa is livable is loving and you can have a good time here we'll see you on the next video bye for now